Hi, today I want to talk to you about machine learning for business intelligence. My name is Chris, and I'm a team lead on the AI and Analytics Center of Excellence. I'm joined today by my colleague, David, who's a solutions architect here at Google Cloud. Our presentation today will cover just four topics. First, I'll discuss the value machine learning brings to the world of BI, and David will provide an overview of the different ways BigQuery ML can be integrated with Looker. Then David will give a demo of a solution that uses cloud functions in the Looker Action API to create BigQuery ML models from Looker. Finally, I'll give a demo of a new Looker application that provides business users with a simple and no-code interface for BigQuery ML. Both of the demos you'll see today solve a problem faced by Cloud's business users. They hear a lot about AI and ML, but they have struggled to leverage it for business intelligence workflows. The two new solutions you'll see puts Google's machine learning capabilities directly in the hands of the business user. Before we discuss these new solutions, we want to take a moment to highlight some of the benefits of using machine learning for business intelligence. First, it can help increase productivity by automating some of the exploratory analysis that is done manually today by business users. Secondly, expanding the capabilities of your BI tool to include predictive analytics increases the value of your business intelligence and leads to improved decision making. Finally, Google's explainable AI will help business users gain a deeper understanding of their data and the key drivers behind business metrics. The solutions we'll demo today are designed around Cloud's two most popular products for data analytics. BigQuery is Google's serverless, highly scalable, and cost-effective multi-cloud data warehouse. With BigQuery ML, data scientists and data analysts can build and operationalize machine learning models directly inside BigQuery using SQL. Looker is a business intelligence and embedded analytics platform, enabling business users to access, analyze, and act on trusted data. Using Cloud's top two analytics products together allows customers to fully democratize machine learning by bringing the benefits of BigQuery ML directly to the business user. And now I'll hand it over to my colleague, David, to talk about integrating BigQuery ML and Looker in more detail. Thanks, Chris. There are three general ways to integrate BigQuery machine learning with Looker. The obvious method would be for LookML developers to write BigQuery ML SQL in the Looker modeling layer. However, this is a complex process that not only requires a deep understanding of SQL on LookML, it is also difficult to iterate on and modify the models. Today, we want to introduce two new approaches that are easier and more accessible to all the free users. The first approach is to leverage the Looker Action API. This approach enables users to leverage the Looker Explorer interface and then send a query to a Google Cloud function that will build a model. This would be the recommended solution for teams looking for a narrowly scoped path that can be customized by a serverless developer. The second approach is to use the BigQuery ML Accelerator. This is a brand new application that helps users learn and step through the machine learning process. This application can be installed directly from the Looker marketplace by a Looker admin. We recommend the solution for teams new to machine learning and looking for a graphical user interface to build and share models. We will be diving into a demo of both these new approaches, starting with the Looker Action API. In Looker, we have the Looker Action API. The Action API is a simple webhook-like API to accept the data coming from Looker. You can provision any server with three endpoints that Looker can call to integrate with the destination. In this example, we will be using Google Cloud functions to serve as these endpoints. The first endpoint is used to list the action and provide metadata instructing Looker how to execute the action. The second endpoint is used to provide a form to display to the user to send parameters along with the data. This is where users will be able to choose their model type and any model option parameters. The third endpoint, execute, is used for Looker to send the data payload along with the form information. This is where the SQL query will be sent. Using these three endpoints, we will enable users to create model and run predictions from a Looker Explorer. The final endpoint can be used to integrate another external service to get predictions on the fly. This may be useful when you want to make predictions outside of Looker and take action from other tools. 
So now let's jump into a demo of this workflow. Okay, for this demo, we're going to be using a fictitious e-commerce data set. This is the BigQuery public data project under the Look e-commerce data set, which contains continually updated data on users, products, order items, everything you'd expect to find in an e-commerce data set. And in this example, we'll just run through a hypothetical scenario where you have a lot of customer information and data and you want to predict total sales for new customers. So this would be the customer lifetime value CLV. So let's say you've done your analysis in Looker. You've created a query that contains all the columns that you think are valuable to use in a predictive model. Um, this includes some basic metrics on all your customers. We can then send this report to a cloud function by, by using a Looker action integration. So we can go into our gear icon, click send, and select our action. And so what this was doing is it's hitting the form endpoint of the action. And the first thing we'll need to do is choose a model. So the list of models here and the entire form is something that can be easily customized by a serverless developer to specify the types of models available and all the options you want to give users to choose from. So in this example, we're going to choose linear regression. And this is uh, going to hit the form endpoint again to dynamically display fields based on the model type that we selected. So specific to linear regression, we have the optimized strategy and we're going with auto strategy. And now we just need to input the form fields. So we'll create a model name. Uh, the ID column that we want to strip out of the model, which will be the customer's ID and the target column that we want to predict. So this would be the order items that sales. And so these would be the SQL column names in the query. And then we would just hit send. So what this is doing behind the scenes is it's sending the data to the cloud function, the execute function, which will parse the generated SQL of the query and run the create model statement and create a corresponding BigQuery view. Now creating a model can take from a couple of minutes to a couple of hours depending on the complexity of the model. So I'll just jump into an example model I've created previously. So let's say we want to look at new customers that have been registered in the previous day. Uh, first thing we'll need to do is choose the model that we want to use. So we'll choose the BQ public data. Uh, then I'll set a filter on the customer's registered date. And let's look at customers that have been registered in the past one complete days. Now I'll select the customer's ID and the predicted column, which will be predicted net sales. And we'll run that. So what this is doing behind the scenes is it's joining the model and view created in the previous step to our original data set. And now we have predictions for CLV for our new users. And another use case that uh, we can also leverage cloud functions for is to create uh, an additional endpoint that could plug into another external application or service to run predictions outside of Looker on the fly. So in this case, I'll just be using Postman to simulate a webhook to the predict function. And this predict function example expects a JSON object uh, with the model name specified, along with all the columns of data we would use to submit a model generation. So this would be our hypothetical new user. And if we send this to our function, we'll hit the predict function and come up with the predicted net sales. Okay, so check out the video's description for links to the repo with uh, steps that will walk you through generating an auth secret provisioning all the resources and show you how to add an action destination to your Looker instance. The BigQuery ML Accelerator is a purpose-built Looker application designed to give business users access to BigQuery's machine learning capabilities.
It provides a user-friendly interface designed to guide a Looker user through each step of creating and executing a machine learning model. Because of its simple no-code interface, the application serves as a pathway for business analysts to learn and use predictive analytics. Now, let's take a look at the BigQuery ML Accelerator in action. So here we see a typical Looker dashboard. This particular dashboard provides information regarding our customer support ticketing data. At the very top, you'll see some KPIs that provide counts of uh, positive customer feedback as well as negative customer feedback. But more importantly, you'll see that we have many tickets for which we receive no customer feedback. And so this is an example of a, a use case where a Looker business user might want to do predictive analytics to predict the customer satisfaction scores for those tickets. In order to do that, the Looker business user would open up the main menu and they would go down to the application section of the main menu and select their BQML accelerator application. So when they select that application, they're going to be brought to the BQML Accelerator landing page. You'll notice at the top right some, some helpful links providing uh, um, links to BQML docs. You also notice some links to Google provided machine learning courses. In the top left, you'll see a button to create a new machine learning model that brings you into the um, to the machine learning guide that walks you through each step of the data science process. Beneath that, you'll see any machine learning models that have been created by the logged in user. And beneath that, you'll see models that were created by other users, but shared with the logged in user. So we've already created a model to predict customer satisfaction scores. And I'll open up this model to walk you through each step and the, the selections I chose to create that model. So here we see a few tabs at the top. Those tabs walk us through each step of this process. On the first tab, we selected our objective, which was to predict a, a category. Um, satisfaction scores in this case are categorical variables. So we're going to select that objective. The next step is to select our input data, our source data to train the model. We do this through a Looker Explorer. So this interface here should look very familiar to Looker users. You would use that same interface to select your, your input data to train the model. On the next tab, we provide a unique name for our machine learning model. We also select the target, meaning what, what are we trying to predict, uh, which column from that input data that we selected in the previous tab are we trying to predict. Um, and then we can see some summary statistics for our input data, um, such as the number of columns that were selected, the number of rows, and um, things like minimum values, maximum values, averages, and the number of distinct values. So we can use this information to decide if we ultimately want to include those, those fields, those dimensions or measures in our model training, or if we don't. And we have checkboxes here to select or deselect all of these columns from our input data for our model training. We also have a advanced options model here that provides lots of other options for model training. The next step is to review the evaluation statistics after a model has finished training. Um, so this includes some basic evaluation statistics for the objective that we've selected. Um, and for categorical um, objectives, we have the confusion matrix, RSC curve, um, and we have feature importance for, for both objectives. The final tab here is the predict tab. This is where you select data for which you want to get predictions using your, your machine learning model. Again, you do this through a Looker Explorer. 
Um, and you can get predictions for, in this case, customer support tickets that have no customer feedback. You can see here there's a gray column um, with our predicted values for all of these tickets. So this is a very quick demo of the BQML Accelerator. This is coming to Marketplace very soon. Once it's on Marketplace, you'll see it along with the, these uh, three other applications. It'll be the fourth application on Marketplace and a Looker admin can install it from Marketplace and um, configure a few application settings so that eQML is accessible to all of your business users. All right, well, thank you for your time. I'm, I'm glad I got to show you the BQML Accelerator application, and I hope you take time to uh, try it out once it's published on Marketplace. To get started building BigQuery ML models with Looker, you can first install a BigQuery ML Accelerator application or deploy the cloud functions in your GCP org. Serverless developers can work with a Looker administrator to create the cloud function and add the action to Looker. For the application, a Looker administrator will be needed to set up and install the application from the Looker marketplace. Make sure to empower business users by notifying them of these new BigQuery ML capabilities in Looker. Encourage users to explore the data to identify any potential use cases that would benefit from machine learning. Once you've started building models, you can then activate these insights with Looker. Build a dashboard of surface predictions and analyze the predictions in Looker. You can also integrate with other tools using alerts and schedules to make your ML models actionable. We hope this session has been informational and we've given you a few things to explore. Thank you all so much for joining us today.